I finished my Adam's Family Project and uh, it might not look finished because I got some things opened up because in this video what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about uh, the process and highlight the actual rebuild, the mechanical aspects and the electrical aspects and then we'll get into the cosmetics and the gameplay in a different video. I wish I could have captured the actual rebuild of this game but it was a very frustrating restoration it was very time consuming and you know at 200 hours I would say easily in this game it's really hard to, to capture that I mean what are you gonna have 20 hours worth of video who's gonna watch 20 hours worth of video uh, of somebody soldering and you know doing all the things they have to do to do this so I know it's of interest to people but it's a hard thing to capture so I'm gonna start with the head the lamp panel I refinished that I polished all the metal I rebuilt everything, I rewired everything, it looks like new. I'm going to open up the head because I think this is one of the biggest transformations compared to the evaluation video. So inside of here, it's got a new CPU, it's got the correct flipper board, it's got new ribbon cables, it's got a service sound board, it's got a brand new dot matrix controller board, it's got a new extra flipper power supply board, and it's got a rebuilt original driver board. In place of that hack, I mean, and you know, I don't even know what that hack was. I never could quite figure out what that was about. It just didn't make any sense to me. But anyway, in place of that, I've got an LED OCD board. I did make that missing harness for the Thing Lamp board, and I actually installed a new Thing Lamp board because, you know, I don't know why they didn't want to power it, but just in case there was some issue with that, it was easier to put a new one in. So everything's cleaned up back here. It's going to be good and reliable. Now, we're going to talk about underneath the play field. I'm not going to talk about the top side of the play field. I'll do that in a different video. All right. Inside the cabinet, this is probably the most uh, obvious um, uh, transformation, I would say. And you'll see it's got the nickel plated parts. All the wiring is neatly run. And pretty much everything you see in here is either new or polished or nickel plated or you know it's it's hard to put into words at just everything there but you can compare what you see here to that initial video and, and get a good sense of of that transformation I will say um, the highlights of it would be that it does have its missing parts the thing knocker is now in place and uh, the transformer has been refinished and rebuilt and all those wiring hacks have been removed from that it still has an upgraded speaker, but it's a non-powered version, so this will give us a cleaner sound. Um, it does have new interior art because it's a new cabinet anyway, and this is a little bit more subtle, uh, that interior art, than what was on there previously. And also it's well applied. It doesn't have bubbles all in it and trash under it, you know, that kind of thing. All right, let me see. What else? Okay, let's we'll start from the bottom and work our way up. Um, I just want to, before I even go into all the details, I just want to say this. It has all new coils, it has all new targets, it has all new switches, it has all new lamp sockets, it has all new scoops. So that way if I, you know, don't cover that for some reason moving forward, that's said. Alright, let's we'll start down here. So the thing box is nickel plated. It has a new thing motor and gearbox. The other one was not worth salvaging. I found that it had uh, stripped teeth in both the gearbox and on the motor and it was the wrong motor. So no point in getting involved in that. If we look at the scoops, we'll, we'll start with this thing scoop. Um, that is rebuilt of course again with a brand new coil, brand new switch. Everything is run through either shrink tubing or is tied together for strain protection and has clear tubing on the leads to eliminate any uh, possibility of shorting it or shocking. And it also strengthens each tab to where you can tug on them a little bit and you don't have to worry about them breaking the lugs of the coil. Next, we have the bookcase. That's got a nickel plated bracket now. It looks a lot better. It's been well rebuilt. The switches have been gone through and it works properly. I'm going to go over here to this jet bumper area because when you look at the jet bumpers, you, you cover a lot of, of territory there because they have coils, they have switches, and all those kind of things. So it makes it a lot easier 
to go over what's been done. So the nickel plated bracket, the new coil, the insulation on the sleeves, these are all running uh, two plugs with factory correct wiring. And what that does is it makes it where I can unplug this, I could take this off, I could work on it on the workbench. If this thing locked on for some reason, I can unplug it, I can isolate. If it's firing when it shouldn't, I can unplug it, I can isolate it. Is it the switch, is it the coil, is it you know a signal from the CPU? This gives me so much more ability to troubleshoot and diagnose this game uh, without having to break out a soldering iron or a meter. The switches are also new. And you'll notice on the switches, on the common leads, they have that same sleeving uh, and that short protection because very easily this stuff can get tugged and either break or touch to the next lug. Next thing you know, it's firing or other switches are firing that shouldn't. So that's been addressed. In regards to the other switches, the rollover switches, we'll, we'll look at these just uh, for convenience. Now this is not the kind of switch that's originally on the game. This is now in a plastic body and a plastic housing, and it has a hoop-shaped actuator. And I like that better than the factory setup because I don't have to worry about the number two screws. I don't have to worry about the rust and the corrosion that's on those metal brackets. And that hoop actually is easier for the ball to roll over than the hook, and it's also easier to dial it in. It also has a small fork, if you look right here, that kind of acts as a guide for that for that actuator. It kind of keeps it in check. So I like that it keeps it centered. And I think that's probably the majority of the things. I'll talk about a couple other things just to, to make sure I'm being thorough here. It does have all three of its magnets now. So here those are. And if we kind of shoot over here, it has a new magnet driver board, and that magnet driver board actually has a fuse for each magnet. So if the magnet were to lock on, it would blow a fuse instead of burn the play field, which is a really common problem with the Adams family. The entire flipper mechanisms are new, and all the wiring coming off of every single thing that you see here. It doesn't matter if it's this switch, or if it's this coil, or if it's this switch. From the source, all the wiring is new and then it joins with the original factory wire downstream on a plug. By using this new wire I'm able to have much better soldering connections and I'm dealing with good solid wire. I don't have to worry about any internal breaks. I don't have to worry about it not wanting to take the solder. So that's pretty much the majority of that. I would say if you're looking under here the only real original things about it at this point are going to be the lamp boards and the core, just strictly the core of the wiring harness, and that's pretty much it. So hopefully I've covered everything that I've done uh, to the best of my ability in a very short video, and we'll go over the cosmetics and the other aspects of it um, in the next video. But I'm going to let her just kind of go up and down the play field and capture the detail of it really well mechanically and then we'll move on to the cosmetics.